Hey everybody, welcome to the Anxiety Project YouTube channel. I am your host with the most on anxiety recovery. Today, we're talking about negative automatic thoughts. Th thoughts that pop up during the day and you're giving it attention and you're, you're like, why am I thinking these thoughts? Why are these thoughts popping into my head? These are awful. These are terrible. These are just absolutely horrifying. Why am I thinking this way? And right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that these thoughts are normal and everyone experiences them from time to time. It's just important to know that are you reactive to these thoughts? Are you just giving in to these catastrophic ways of thinking? Well, perhaps. I used to be the same way. I used to give in. I used to show these thoughts attention, but not anymore. And I'm, today I'm going to give you three steps to overcome these ways of thinking and, and how we can include the energetic component, the physical component, and the emotional component to changing our negative automatic thinking patterns. Okay, guys? So it's all about self-control and how to watch out for certain thoughts and not to react to these thoughts. It's really like going about your day, you're like, oh my God, like, I, I, why am I thinking that way? And you, would, and you think you're God in some way. You think that the outcome of these thoughts is what is, is what really going to happen. No, you're not God. You're not, the outcome of these thoughts most likely 99% of the time will not happen. Okay, guys, 99% of the time, it will not happen. You're not God. Whatever you think is not, it's not going to happen, okay? So these negative thoughts you're experiencing are well-learned thoughts that can be even influenced by certain environments you're in. So say you're driving home from work or you're driving to work and certain thoughts pop up or you're at you're at work and certain thoughts pop up and even when you come home it doesn't matter it's just the environment can influence you say like if you're at home and it's a nice relaxing environment it's like certain thoughts pop up at home maybe relaxing thoughts maybe maybe calming thoughts and maybe thoughts about your family but at work you may, you might be thinking about thoughts of different co-workers you might be thinking thoughts about you know, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's the cer certain environments can influence certain thoughts that you guys are experiencing, okay? So I want to say that um, motivation and willpower does not work. So say you're on YouTube and you're watching a motivational speech. <laughs> Believe me, I've watched them. Okay, maybe the motivational speech of, of Will Smith or, or like Wim Hof or somebody like that. They're just, they're just going on about like, yeah, be the best. And, and maybe like it's, a, it's a, bit, a very spiritual speech and you feel uplifted after watching that video. But then all of a sudden, an hour later, you totally forget the video. And then next thing you know, you're watching Jimmy Fallon videos or SNL videos or, or like movie trailers or whatever or, or like even you're at work and and you just totally forget about the video it's because willpower and motivation does not work okay willpower and motivation does not work you have to remember that these automatic negative thoughts are well learned thoughts practiced you've practiced thinking this way over a long period of time and just watching a motivational video on youtube will not help you it will not help get rid of your unconscious beliefs okay you have beliefs in your unconscious mind that are telling you to pay attention to these certain thoughts okay so willpower does not work motivation does not work it's all about strategy, okay, guys? Strategy is the name of the game if you want to better your thinking, okay? If you want to start challenging these thoughts, it's all about willpower, okay? 
So you have to have an outcome focused approach, an outcome focused approach. Your unconscious mind is trying to tell you that your negative thoughts are important and that you need to pay attention to them. So your unconscious mind is your storage system. It stores, it store, it it stores everything. So, so it's, 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 it's like paying attention to a rational 10 year old child. Your unconscious mind is a rational 10 year old child and you, the child is screaming wah I don't want to go into that place it's too scary wah wah what you know what if mommy and daddy do die wah what if what if I do get fired why would you listen to this child why would you give a 10 year old child a rational attention okay you're going to realize that you know, this voice in you is, is, is the same voice as a 10 year old child. And when you start to, um, not fight back, but it's mostly start to use rational thinking towards this voice. When you start give, putting evidence behind this voice, giving, you know, not, not really giving the voice too much attention. Okay. So it's, it's, it's reactive in nature, your unconscious mind, and it has the voice of a 10 year old child. Okay. Remember that. So when you're reacting to these negative thoughts, just remember that you're reacting to a 10 year old child, the voice of one. Okay. That's your unconscious mind. Remember that it's so important. Your conscious mind needs to step up to the plate. That's why you're thinking so many negative thoughts. Your, co- your conscious mind is not active. We have to start getting that active in order to question these thoughts, in order to counter these thoughts. It's all about countering. Me, I recovered from anxiety, but do I still get irrational thoughts from time to time? Of course, but I have the ability to counter them instantly because I've practiced countering them. You guys have not practiced countering these irrational thinking patterns. So it's all about countering and and just practicing. And it's all about practice. You've practiced anxiety. You've practiced negative automatic thoughts for so long that they've gotten out of control, but you can practice countering these irrational thoughts. Okay, guys? So the most common negative automatic thoughts are mind reading and fortune telling. Mind reading is walking down the street and you, some people are laughing and you think they're laughing at you. Maybe, oh, my shirt's ugly. I shouldn't have worn this shirt today. Oh, my hair is ugly. I'm, I'm having a bad hair day. Oh my God. It's really, um, not, 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 not perceiving the situation on all angles. You're really, you're really putting it more on you. You're putting it more internally. So you're just thinking, oh my God, like they probably think I'm, I'm this or I'm that. And then there's fortune telling. It's catastrophic thinking. It's, it's, it's more about um, predicting the future. And a lot of the time, most of the time, 99% of the time, so most of the time, the, the predictions are false. They're, they don't happen. So imagine all of this time you're wasting predicting that, well, maybe this is going to happen. Maybe that is going to happen, but 99% of the time it does not happen. Okay. So in mind reading and a fortune telling. Okay. So it's all about getting to a place where you start to see both sides of the story, not just one side, not just being reactive towards these negative thoughts, but it's seeing both sides of the story. Okay. So I'm going to give you three steps to change. Okay. The first is the energetic component to change. Okay. That's through imagery, through meditation. And the, the whole exercise through imagery is to get into quite a spot of in your house and to take deep breaths to get into like a meditation kind of state of mind. Okay. And, and then you want to look at the event 
where you first started experiencing these negative automatic thoughts, okay? And then you want to look at that event through different filters, through different lenses. Look at it differently from all angles, okay? So maybe like, maybe like, um, like putting evidence behind it, okay? If it's if you're worried about someone might have an illness, you're worried about a family member dying, if you're worried about, you know, how what people are thinking of you, it's it's important to put evidence behind that thought. Not letting the irrational child spew out its nonsense. No, it's about putting evidence, giving more rational conscious thought towards that thinking pattern that you've adopted, okay? So that's really important and you have to gain the lesson. So when you're in that meditative state and you're looking at that event or, or a situation where you first adopted negative thinking, you have to learn the lesson you've gained, okay? So that's a really important uh, CBT technique that I know myself. And um, then there's the physical component. The physical component is when you start shifting your physiology from uh, in the morning to uh, at night. So when you get up in the morning, it's about noticing your posture, noticing your breathing patterns. If you're hyperventilating or whatever, shallow breathing, it's, 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 it's such a huge influence on your anxiety and, and your thinking patterns. But um, that's what I mean. It's like, it's, it's how you, um, how you present yourself. So your physiology controls your psychology. And when you divide the day into three sections, morning, afternoon, evening, you can start to shift your breathing and your posture through these different sections of the day. So you have to be consciously aware different parts of the day, set reminders for yourself, an elastic band helps, notes maybe at work, if you're working in an office or something, write a note down, but it's important that you start shifting your physiology because the, the way you uh, sit or stand and walk is the way you think. So like if you sit upright with your back straight, you're sending the right signals to your brain and then you start shifting your thoughts and then you start perceiving things differently. You even start to look at things differently. You start to question these these horrible thoughts. You start to look at these horrible thoughts through a different light and you start being, wait, wait a minute, that, that thought, it's not serving me any good and why am I giving that thought attention? Why am I giving that 10 year old child attention? That's a good question that you guys need to ask yourself, okay? So, and when I say shifting your posture, it also means just for a minimum of two minutes, okay? Just shifting your physiology for two minutes alone changes things, okay? And it changes things long term, okay? So, and then there's the emotional component. So the three things, energetic, physical, and then there's the emotional. And the emotional is the last one. And, and the emotional is when you take action, when you start doing things to counter your old behaviors, to, to counter the old negative thoughts you experience, okay? So when negative automatic thoughts show up, it's your unconscious saying, do you want to continue thinking this way? Do you want to continue acting this way? This is what your subconscious is telling you. Do you want to continue acting this way? And then what are you going to do then? Are you going to continue? Are you going to show it attention? Are you going to continue thinking irrational thoughts? Start to counter it. Start doing things that you haven't done before. Drive to work a different route. Walk on your break somewhere else. Eat something different. Talk to somebody you don't usually talk to. It's really about breaking patterns. Your pattern is irrational thinking patterns. You practice them for a long time. Now it's time to adopt new patterns. New patterns. It's time to challenge these thoughts. Okay, guys? That's really important. And negative automatic thoughts were a huge thing in my life and these three steps to overcome them 
is absolutely important. And it's not about YouTube motivational videos. That does not work. It's about strategy, okay, guys? I love you guys so much. Do not let your anxiety define who you are. I'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.